Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're talking about flooring. I just finished putting down a new flooring in my shop and I had a pile of questions about it. This is something I've, I've been toying with and wanting to do for about four years now. Uh, and I finally pulled the trigger on it. I chose rubber flooring and this is a, a 3 8 inch thick material. You can get this much, much thicker up to 3 quarter or more. Um, 3 8 is kind of the really nice breaking point. If it's thinner than that, a quarter inch, you really need something to stick it down. But 3 8 can just lay flat and, and give you a nice surface. Thicker than that, um, and it does have a few other benefits, but uh, for me, the price to ratio, I went with a 3 8 When looking at flooring, there's basically two options. You can get EVA foam, or you can get rubber. There are a few other things, but most all are one or the other. And the EVA foam is usually this puzzle piece. It's very, very lightweight. It's very fluffy. You can stick your finger into it and crush it down. Um, so this gives you a lot more instant padding, whereas this is very, very solid, very, very thick. I mean, you, you, you can't push your finger. I mean, you can get your fingernail in there, but this is a, a very, very heavy rubber. EVA foam, you can get all sorts of colors. These are the, the kids' puzzle pieces, and I use this for my 3D printer. You can get it in camo black. You can get it in whatever you want. The nice thing about this is it's, it's incredibly cost-effective. It is very, very cheap. Uh, you can buy this for, in some cases, 25 cents a square foot. It is very, very cheap. It's very easy to put down with the puzzle pieces. They all interlock together, and you're good to go. With rubber, you can also get it in the puzzle pieces, but this is far more expensive. It is most of the time, if you can get it for a dollar a square foot, it's, it, that's incredibly cheap. Most of the time you're going to be spending two or three dollars a square foot. I wanted to put my bench and other heavy tools down on the flooring. And if I were to use EVA foam, it would sink down in and it would be fine, but it would be very hard to move it around. Once it's in place, it's in place. With rubber flooring, I can still pick up my bench and slide it around. It slides on the rubber flooring. Now it takes a good bit of force, but it can do it. With the EVA, EVA foam, I would actually have to physically pick it up. I would not be able to rotate it and slide it around on that. The other reason I went with rubber over EVA foam is that it's much easier to maintain. Because it's a hard surface, you can sweep this very easily. Uh, you can move things around on it. You're not going to be damaging it with this. If you pull something on it and it catches, it will rip the floor. Uh, sweeping this can also be a bit of a pain. Uh, it's just not as generally functional, but for the price, uh, you have a hard time saying no to that. But the nice thing about the rubber is I can sweep it, I can mop it, I can do anything to do this I would do in concrete, but it gives me a little bit more cushion. A lot of people look at putting down rubber or EVA foam because they want something that's a little softer. They want something that's better for anti-fatigue. And if you have rubber shoes, that is a very important thing. Uh, however, because I have wooden shoes, I really don't have any problem at all with anti-fatigue because these are shaped exactly to my foot. I stand on concrete all day long and I don't have any problem at all with these. But if I wear my rubber shoes, then I really need something with a little bit more give and bounce in it. One of the big reasons for me is, oh no, I dropped a chisel on the floor. I don't want to do that on concrete, but on the rubber, I'm really not going to hurt it that much. I mean, it's just rubber. If one of my planes were to be falling out of my hand when I'm putting it away, it's going to have a much better chance of surviving hitting the rubber than concrete. Also, when working on concrete, uh, when you get all the wood chips on there, shoes just don't grip. Even rubber shoes on concrete with wood curls down, you don't have any grip. And if you're trying to push on something, your feet are sliding all over the place. That's even far more worse with wooden shoes. They slide all over the place even on bare concrete. So you put wood chips down and it's just a slippery surface. You put down EVA foam and you're gonna have a lot more grip, but mm, still not quite as much. You put down rubber and <laughs> I got all the grip in the world. This is phenomenal. I can push on anything and my shoes do not slide on rubber. There's also a benefit to the heating and cooling. Having that concrete floor down, it's, it's always cold. And in the winter, it's just, it's cold. Uh, in the summer, it's nice, but it's not a huge benefit. Having the rubber or the EVA foam, the EVA foam would be a little bit better as an insulation. It just keeps that cold off of your feet, allowing you to do more without absorbing it from the concrete. Uh, so there is a little bit of an insulative value to this, though the EVA foam would be a little bit, a little bit better at that. 
Along with the insulation value, there is also an audio value to it that does absorb a little bit more sound than the concrete does. The concrete makes it bounce all over the place. Getting this gives you a little bit quieter shot. That would be even better with EVA foam because it's a little more absorbent than just the rubber. But it is actually rather impressive how much echo that takes out of the room just to have something down and off the concrete. So I chose to go with rubber. It is the more durable option. It's just the one that fit me and my shop a little bit better. And I have a little bit more money to spend on it so that the cheaper price on this isn't as big of a tag for me. Though if I were making this four or five years ago, I would probably have gone with EVA foam because back then money was very important. I bought it in rolls. So mine came in 25 foot long rolls. I bought all three of them from rubberflooring.com. They actually shipped all three of them on a pallet and it showed up at my door. Very, very happy, but very, very heavy. Each roll was around 300 pounds. And so I had to bring them down the stairs on a dolly and start laying them out. Now I can actually buy rubber in the puzzle piece design and that would make the installation much much easier but it is a bit more expensive because it takes more to cut the puzzle pieces than it does just to roll out a roll of rubber and i didn't want to move everything out of my shop so i decided to do it bit by bit uh, it would be easier with puzzle pieces because then i could work off a whole section rather than doing a whole roll at once so i cleared off one third of my shop and rolled out a roll, making sure to clean and sweep and detail it because I don't want anything stuck underneath. Especially on my floor from all the epoxy spills, um, yeah, I had to work on getting up a lot of that. Once I got the floor all clean, I could roll out the first roll and cut it to length. The rubber actually cuts very easily with a sharp utility knife. You score it along the line, and then you come back in with another pass or two, and you're down through it. You can actually do it all in one pass with a utility knife, and I was very surprised at how easy it was to cut. Uh, pretty close in how easy it was to cut the EVA foam, actually, because the EVA, EVA foam tears a bit more. The rubber actually slices through very easily. Now that I had one area laid out, we can move everything from the middle section over to that area, and roll out the next roll. And it's kind of rinse and repeat. And I was able to do the whole shop and it gave me a chance to actually clean and detail the shop. And I'm, I'm really happy with that. There were a few small spaces that I had to lay out small chunks and, and cut out pieces to make them fit. But in all told, I was able to do it in three rolls, four foot wide, and ended up with one long chunk running down a side. During the installation, I was thinking, man, I wish I had done this in puzzle pieces because it would be making it a lot easier for moving things around the shop. But after installation, I started doing the sweeping and cleaning of it and I realized, Eh, I don't know if I'd like that because all the puzzle pieces create a little bit of variance uh, and make it a little bit harder to sweep and it's more places for dust to get into. So I think for the long term, I actually prefer the rolls. But who knows? We'll see what happens two, three years from now and I'll probably do an update on that at some point. I know one of the questions I'm going to get is, do you remember that time you spilled three gallons of expensive epoxy on the floor? Yes, I remember that. <laughs> Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I decided to go with rubber as opposed to EVA foam. With the EVA foam, the epoxy actually binds to it very easily. And when you try to pull off epoxy, you're going to be ripping apart the foam. Uh, with the rubber, actually with the give on it, it chips off and breaks away. It will adhere a little bit, but nowhere near as bad as the EVA foam. Um, so if I do spill epoxies and things like that on the floor, this is the better option. Uh, it's probably not better than concrete. Uh, the nice thing about concrete is that it's there. Um, I have lumps of epoxy in there I had to clean out when putting this down, uh, but I could chisel it out without really hurting the concrete. With this, I know it's going to hurt it a little bit if I do get some epoxy on it, but it won't hurt this quite as much as the EVA foam. All told, it is a fairly expensive thing to put into a shop. You know, for a shop this size with purchasing, shipping and all, you're probably looking at 600, 800 or more. And you know, that's a big pill to swallow. But there are few things that you interact with as much as your floor. And if you really think about it, it's the basis for everything you do in the shop. And uh, I think it's worth putting a bit of money in to have something that increases the quality of what you can do. It increases your function, it protects your tools, it sound deadens things. It's just an all around really good upgrade to the shop. Is it gonna make a huge difference in my woodworking and joinery? No but it is going to increase my enjoyment of the shop. And that's really what it's all about. So if I can increase the amount of fun I have in the shop by putting down some flooring, that's money well spent. 
So where can you get it? Um, I actually ordered mine through rubberflooring.com. They cater to gyms mostly, uh, but it was probably the most cost-effective place I can find where I could buy large rolls of it in the quantities I needed. And even with shipping, it was probably the cheapest place around I found. Now, if your shop isn't that big, you can actually go to a tractor supply or something like that and buy horse mats. They tend to be a little bit more expensive square footage than buying large rolls, but if you're looking at puzzle pieces, often horse mats can be a little cheaper. Also, horse mats come three inches thick most of the time. You can get thinner ones. And so if you really want a thicker material, the horse mat may be the way to go because you get more thickness per price. And so there's lots of other options out there, and I really can't say one is better than the other. Uh, for me, with a long, thin shop, Having a 25 foot roll with no seams all the way along it works out really well. The horse mats, if I was working in a smaller space, may actually be the way to go for that. So it's, it's one of those things where you've got to shop around and do a little research. And if you're looking for the cheapest way possible, you can get EVA foam all over the place. You can buy them at most big box stores. You can buy them online in large pallets for almost nothing in comparison to the rubber. And uh, they can be very, very useful. And they have a lot of pros and cons one way or the other. So every shop is gonna need something different. And I hope I talked through the pros and cons a little bit better for you. I can still do a little bit of a clog dance on here, but it's nowhere near as loud as the concrete. But for me, I am in love with this flooring. This is exactly what I want, and I wish I had done this years ago. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing where this takes me. So I'll probably do an update in a year or two and let you know if I made the right choice or not. Who knows? Um, I may say, man, I wish I got puzzle pieces, um, or maybe I wish I got something a little thicker. Uh, the 3 8 is kind of that price balance for me. I, I like getting things that aren't dirt cheap, but not really high-end, high quality. So uh, who knows where this is going to take me. If you do have any questions, I will answer all of them down in the description down below. I do read through all of them and I answer as many as I can. If you do have any other comments, questions, snide remarks, thoughts, things I missed, let me know those down there as well. Also, I want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are literally the reason why I can keep doing this. So thank you. If you would like to find out more about Patreon and keep these videos coming, there's a link to that down below. Or you can click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube and help us out that way. So I think that'll do it for now, and until next time, have a wonderful day. I should carve a foot out of this thing. That way I could call it Roberto. You have to make sure you don't take two or three looks at this, otherwise people might say you're rubbernecking. You have to be careful when rolling around on the floor, otherwise it might rubber you the wrong way.